The next speaker is Hugh Guan Niu. Hugh is Microsoft Asia Pacific Cloud Native Technical Lead. He is an experienced mobile and backend developer with a demonstrated history of working in computer software industry. And he focuses on helping Microsoft Enterprise customers to successfully deliver their cloud native applications on Azure in Asia. He will talk about orchestrating APIs at scale, and this is a walkthrough section to orchestrate serverless container and integration APIs using Azure APIM. So now we have uh, Hugh here. Can you share your screen? Yes, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very oh, well. Perfect. OK, right. awesome. I think you need to pass uh, change the screen to your slides. Yep, yeah. that's perfect. So I will hand over the time to you. Yeah, thank you. That was an uh, awesome presentation from Dani. OK, so uh, again, thanks, uh, Anthony, for introducing me. So my name is Hugh. Uh, I'm from uh, Microsoft Team Global Black Belt. I'm focusing on uh, cloud, nat uh, cloud native technologies that includes uh, API management and um, you know, container-based microservices and uh, Kubernetes. So uh, I'm actually here to talk to you about uh, you know the um, the enterprise API management. How do we deliver like you know a sort of um, uh, orchestration or a management of API across a uh, a big enterprise where it may span you know multiple countries and so on. So uh, going into this, I'm gonna. Uh, my agenda is to cover a bit about uh, an overview of what it means for us uh, API management, and then we're go, uh, going to go a bit into how do we template these, and you know how do we structure this to deploy to the whole uh, enterprise, and then uh, we'll introduce to you a concept of a, a landing zone. And uh, what's next is uh, we'll talk a bit about uh, what it means uh, for a self-hosted gateway, when do you use it, and uh, last but not least is um, how do you use that gateway to integrate with Kubernetes and you know, to connect to uh, REST APIs or gRPC APIs that might you know, uh, reside on that uh, Kubernetes clusters. So, um, uh, let's go into an overview of what, what it means for us an API management. So you got like a uh, multiple devices or client applications, um, you know, live on one end, and then they want to connect, you know, to the data and services. So that's something uh, most often that we introduce, like either a REST API or you know GraphQL or gRPC or WebSocket. So essentially. An API for us, it uh, it comprises of three things. The first thing is is the facade, which is hiding the back end from the front end. Uh, secondly, is a single point of ingress uh, for all of the APIs, and even including you know the APIs that is calling to the third party. Um, and last but not least is the uh, self-service user onboarding, you know, that allows like developer and user to uh, kind of um, uh, do self-discovery or API discovery and be able to use it themselves. So, uh, you know, addressing these three points, then um, essentially we address it in, uh, in three, uh, three equivalent um, components. So um, you know, as you can see here, the applications on the devices and IoT and so on, they are communicating to an API gateway. The API gateway acts as a facade between the backend and front end, and is validating all of the requests and then forward it into uh, the backend services. That might be you know any HTTP backend uh, services. Uh, that may or may not uh, reside on Microsoft Cloud. It can also, you know, be um, any other uh, on-premise uh, or other cloud destination. Um, but essentially, you know, this gateway going to contain all of the latest um, uh, policy and also uh, API definitions. So the way that you onboard new API applications is for you to use a management plane. So the API provider will uh, go and define their own policies and onboard new APIs via the management plane. And essentially, uh, all of the gateways uh, will be synchronizing the latest configurations from the management plane. So whenever the client applications, the uh, developer, they want to integrate with these API, 
they'll be able to access to a developer portal that um, that's essentially uh, will also be synchronized with the management plane via a management URL. So uh, anytime that the, there is a new API or a new policy being applied, then the developer portal as well as the gateway will have like a very instant uh, update of that uh, new configuration. So essentially, that's the gist of uh, API management. Um, so, uh, you know, utilizing this concept. So, uh, how do we actually uh, want to orchestrate all of these at scale? You know, not only for one project, but also for multiple projects. But but not only stop there, but also for multiple subsidiary of a collaborate or a enterprise. So that's where we introduce a concept of what we call a landing zone. So essentially, a landing zone is a uh, all infrastructure component needed to deploy a uh, an application. So in that essence, then uh, it's important for us to you know identify all of the building blocks that need to secure uh, API management. You know, coming from networking, it has to be in the private VPC, private VNet, and then you know it has to have a, a WAF layer. It has to have an egress outbound to an uh, uh, firewall and all of that component. So it's important for us to define this, um, you know, in a infrastructure as code um, uh, approach, and in that essence, then we are able to, you know, define all of the building block necessary to uh, template API management and be able to have a repeatable deployment across multiple environments. So in this approach, then, uh, then if you're looking at uh, like. Um, uh, a development cycle, that's where we're going to have like a definitions or development of a new API being defined in VS Code, and they are able to uh, um, to have a GitOps model where, you know, maybe you have a Azure pipeline, GitHub Actions, or Jenkins, or any other CI/CD tool that are uh, subscribing to um, to watch a uh, repository whenever that there is a new uh, commit, then it will automatically deploy to all of the uh, environments either in production or in development uh, environment. So let me take an example. For example. Um, this is an example where we are following a model. Uh, we call it a multi-tenant and multi-subscription model. So in, in this example, we're going to have a large enterprise where there are multiple subsidiary. Uh, you know, maybe there is a subsidiary in Singapore, subsidiary for Thailand, subsidiary for Indonesia, and so on. So, on. so in uh, all of these subsidiary that we're going to have like um, uh, we're gonna have like a uh, active region and the DR region. So it may be active, active, or uh, active, passive, what have you. But um, in essence, then we tend to uh, deploy like active, active. That means you know there is a replica in each of the region, and we're gonna put an API management uh, service that actually spans the two uh, regions. So uh, in essence, then that is identical to all of the subsidiary. And when you look into a particular subsidiary, then, for example, you have a uh, in a landing zone approach. Then we have more multiple layers. So um, networking is layer one, and then API management service is layer two, and then um, maybe you're going to have some sort of compute uh, application uh, lying on top of it. So the application is like a layer three. So in this uh, example, then uh, essentially we would actually build a pipeline. For you to uh, uh, for you to actually define where is the application uh, repository, and this pipeline would synchronize with that application repository to get the latest open API or the Swagger definition, and then uh, get the latest config from that uh, re application repository and register it in the um, common API management service. So going. Um, uh, with this approach, then uh, essentially we will be able to um, deploy, you know, API management service uh, with all of the necessary building blocks to multiple subsidiary. So an example of that, as you can see, uh, for example, here. 
uh, we have defined like you know an API management settings and um, being able to deploy to uh, multiple uh, one or multiple regions. We're able to define like you know a specific firewall and all of the uh, necessary uh, API management you know uh, policy. And uh, every time that we actually um, uh, need to extend this landing zone to a new uh, subsidiary or a new project that needs a dedicated API management instance, then we'll just uh, allow them to uh, create their own uh, you know, um, TF uh, variable, so uh, uh, file. So essentially, this file is uh, encapsulate what are the different configurations that they need for example you know uh, what skew do they need and what um what is the certificate that they need and then uh whether they need a specific um ip range or you know a specific api management policy like uh, jwt val uh, validation jwe what have you so every time that there is a new tfr uh, um, every time that there is a new requirement for a new environment or a new country or a new project, then they can simply create a new TFR and then PR that. So make a pull request against the uh, the repository, and they will go through a uh, approval process. Once it's actually approved for them to actually have um, that API management instance then um, you know champions or github or something else they can automatically go ahead and deploy that api management instance it is so repeatable that we actually have um up to you know 20 different countries and with like uh, even uh more than 40 or 50 api management instances being provisioned and it's very reliable because these are um, defined in code, so everything will be, uh, you know, um, consistent with each other. So going a bit deeper into the application side, where we actually um, uh, have to create a pipeline where we onboard all of these applications onto a API management instance. This is where we are uh, going a bit deeper into, um, you know, creating a specific pipeline that will be uh, doing the synchronized process with the uh, with the uh, uh, application repository, and essentially, um, when um, the uh, when the synchronization process uh, goes to the repository and pulling out a certain uh, you know app reference property or you know the XML um, file that defines the policy for API management and also like um, the repository of the applications then the synchronization process will actually register that applications onto API management. The moment that this end up on the uh, management plane, then all of the gateways that uh, reside in Southeast Asia or East Asia, they will be synchronizing with this latest um, API and it will be made available on all of the pubs. Um, this is a specific example where we actually have a app reference that's called AK, uh, uh, AK Sales, and then you know we have a um, Swagger or Open API JSON file that is residing on a repository, and uh, this is the XML file that defines all of the policies. You know you can have the quota or rate limiting or all of these uh, definitions in there. And uh, essentially, you know, once we have defined this pipeline, then uh, we can register one app, two, uh, two apps, or three apps, or you know, x number of apps, uh, you know, and it will be synchronized um, pretty much um, every half an hour to have the latest config inside that common API management service. Yeah. So. Um, just, just to uh, show you a bit uh, on how, how this is done in practice. So if you, if you were to look at, for example, uh, this is the landing zone API management. So this is done in, uh, in uh, Terraform. And uh, this actually defines you know, all of the res uh, resource group, the logging, and also you know, the uh, different type of uh, products. Uh, that are available for uh, for you to be included inside uh, API management. Then uh, with this, then we are able to deploy uh, for a specific subsidiary uh, with uh, you know their own uh, set of personal uh, informations. 
And once we deploy this API management, then we're going to have what we call a landing zone. So once the landing zone is applied, then, uh, for example, if we uh, have like multiple applications that want to deploy on top of this landing zone, then what we do is we will also create a pipeline for this uh, application. The pipeline will actually um, deploy a, uh, for example, this is to deploy a to-do API application. Um, and this exposed under HTTP, HTTPS, and essentially uh, it will be exposed under the host name to do api.antoso.internal. So um, this is the remote TF state. Uh, this is for me to reference the landing zone that I want to deploy to. So if I have a landing zone that is, you know, uh, for the Singapore subsidiary, then I would actually rename this to uh, Singapore subsidiary API management landing zone. Or if I want to deploy it in Hong Kong, then I'll have a landing zone uh, underscore APIM underscore HK, for example. So once I actually deploy this and then you know define all of my Swagger URL and then the uh, policy URL, this is all uh, relative URL. So uh, it will get registered into that API management instance. So uh, effectively, you know, all of the all of the policies inside these applications. For example, there is the Swagger uh, for to do API. I have like a uh, number of API there, and also I have like a uh, policy where I could put like rate limiting or quota or some other uh, policies that I want to do, to um, enforce on that particular API. So this is where you know um, having this uh, GitOps model, where um, your Git repository becomes a single source of truth for both the API definitions of uh, the application as well as the API management provisioning landing zone. So you know every time that anyone make a change, it has to go through a PR. Once approved, then you know it will auto automatically get deployed and registered and synchronized. So everything is uh, very seamless and traceable. So if anything wrong, then you could totally roll it back to the previous commit. Um, so that is uh, essentially the um, um, uh, the way that we orchestrate uh, API management uh, across a uh, conglomerate uh, where there is multiple project and um, uh, subsidiaries that is we are residing within that enterprise. So um, some of the recent announcements or and releases. Um, so this is going a bit into a day two operation, where uh, we are release a number of updates for you to uh, debug uh, a live running you know API management uh, gateway on Visual Studio Code. And uh, it's, uh, it's a lot simpler to onboard uh, you know, HTTP backend. So that includes you know, external cloud as well as a, uh, Azure Functions or uh, AKS or App Service. And uh, also, you know, there is end-to-end -end distributed tracing in application inside and Azure Monitor. So we, uh, we embrace that and release the new release, uh, the new updates for you to try it out. So a few example, for example, uh, a few example in um, uh, debugging uh, a, a live running session. So maybe if I were, um, yeah, instead of running this uh, video, I can actually try to uh, let's go to here. Yeah. So you see, I have a free API. I have like an echo service, and then I have a the uh, database binding or a message topic. So if I were to go to this particular API, um, then I could actually go into, this is Visual Studio Code. Let me go here. This is Visual Studio Code. And uh, if I were to look at the Azure, and then I can actually view all of my API management instance. So if, for example, it is here. Um, this is my API management instance, and I want to debug, for example, a echo service um, uh, API. This is a post API. I can actually turn on the policy debugging, and uh, I just need to point it to uh, the URL of my API management instance. And um, for example, if I were to click send request, Need, but 
I were to click here, okay, send request. Ah, I actually need to, um, policy, that's right, okay. Yeah, um, there you go. So uh, essentially uh, in, in the live debugging, I can actually put uh, breakpoints and be able to you know, debug what are the uh, message that is coming through and uh, essentially have a uh, trace locations closed. But um, actually, um, this is currently connected to uh, my AKS. So uh, what is expected uh, to be seen here is uh, actually the, uh, for example, if you were to uh, enable the debug uh, policy session there, uh, once you click on send request, then uh, it should effectively uh, pops up like you know any of the debug sessions so all of the requests and uh backend services uh you know it would actually show uh shows up for you and then you can actually see what is going via your policy and that would actually help you out in uh kind of having a better development experience for uh testing your policy um right so um uh, th this is particularly uh, uh, useful, so if you are using the product, so please try it out. Um, now, I'm going a bit into the uh, self-hosted gateway. So, um, so this is a, a feature that uh, we uh, released a number of months ago. So essentially, now uh, we are able to uh, put API management gateway on uh, as a Docker container onto your environment. So effectively, then um, if you have Docker or if you have uh, Kubernetes running on premise or on another cloud, then you can actually put API gateway inside that environment, and those API gateway will be synchronized with the management plane for the latest configurations. So by doing this, then all of the uh, all of the end uh, user they can call directly on the uh, the gateway on those uh, you know external uh, data center or on premise or you know on the other cloud, and they would actually get the same response or the same experience as calling you know the Azure API gateway. So um, essentially, that is. Um, uh, the uh, API management gateway, and also with the new announcement that we just made like a couple of weeks ago, then we are uh, adding a integrations with a um, a Kubernetes uh, component that is called uh, that is called Dapper. So what essentially Dapper is is a um, is a sidecar pattern for you to uh, connect, uh, you know, uh, with your microservices. So essentially, uh, it's the distributed application runtime. So uh, if you look at this, um, if you look at this, uh, for example, uh, architecture, then uh, if you have like a user applications running on, uh, um, you know, on one part, and then another application running on the second part. Then Dapper will uh, will be deployed as a sidecar, so they will interconnect with uh, each other, and uh, you know that allows you to have like uh, communication between App One and App Two and App Three via HTTP or gRPC. So uh, Dapper essentially, you know, it only uh, it it not only have this communications uh, capability, but it also have like a pub sub. Uh, capability where you know one app can uh, publish some message and then the other app could be subscribed to it, or it can have like a state store where you know all of this uh, Dapper is storing its state inside a Redis or it's storing its state inside an external you know uh, database, for example. So using the self-hosted gateway. Now the self-hosted gateway can actually talk to the Dapper, and then Dapper would, in a sense, proxy those requests onto the 
user applications, you know, this could be communication via HTTP, and this communication could be via uh, gRPC. So in this way, then the self-hosted gateway would enable a whole bunch of integration scenario where it allows you to you know, uh, reach all of your applications via Dapper and you know, uh, have them be uh, visible and be orchestrated centrally from Azure. And um, the, endpoint, the endpoint gateway would be deployed you know, not only on Azure, but also on on-premise or other cloud. So this is a very powerful scenario, and we have uh, released it in preview right now. So um, yeah, uh, I would encourage you to have a look at the below link uh, for you know um, having experience to try it out. So I hope that was helpful, and yeah, thank you. Thank you, Hugh, for giving us a comprehensive walkthrough. And since we are running out of time, then uh, we will go to the next sections and. Thank you, Hugh, and thank you all of you to join this section. For the next